one that's helping my family members when they get into like financial dilemmas. My oldest sister owed me $2,000 and she told me she was gonna pay me in December and it's now March. And my youngest sister owed me $200 and she, she also hasn't paid me back. How do I ask for my money back from my sisters without feeling guilty? Why should you have to feel guilty about asking for your money back? They, wasn't <laughs> fi they didn't feel guilty when they asked you for the money. <laughs> Secondly, anybody that tells you they're paying you the money back in December, they're lying. <laughs> no one gives you money back at Christmas. No one. <laughs> you, you gotta get your money back. And you should just ask them. Hey, look, I really need that money. Go to them the same way they went to you. Hey, listen, I'm in a really bad position, man. <laughs> I really messed up. I need your help. I know you got it. <laughs> You've probably heard that before. I know you got it. But she lives in the Bahamas, though. I live in Florida. Okay, you're not getting that money back. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's a loss. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta buy people out your life. Not meaning you won't speak to your sister anymore, but once you give them money and they don't pay it back, you no longer ever have to give this person a dollar again. So I call it buying them out your life. But let me help you understand something. When people wanna borrow money, the way they start the conversation is, hey man, let me holler at you. And y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. If your relatives go, hey, I need to holler at you, they finna ask for money. When they leave messages, see, I don't even have voicemail on my phone. You can't leave me a message. I don't do messages, because all my messages is help. And I just started asking people, if you didn't know my number, what would you do? OK, cool, get to doing that. <laughs> see, stop that old Steve, I know you got it. Yeah, I got it. It's not for you, though. You're going to have to stop because people are taking advantage of your kindness. That's all this is. You're a very nice young lady, and they're taking advantage of it. And this is you and your husband's money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not their money. They always need something. But you can't be the catch basin for everybody's problems. Right. Just don't, man. And just call your sister up in the Bahamas. Say, it's really important that I get that money back. When can, can I get it back really soon? I really need it. And just see what she say. Okay. If she says, I don't have it right now, you just write it off as a loss. You survived the 2000 Okay, thank you, Steve. Right here, because he received over 9 million views on show, social media and nearly 15,000 comments after wanting to know if he was too picky when it came to dating women. Watch this. All right, I've been single 10 years. I'm having trouble finding the right woman. You know, it could be petty things turn me off from she says something stupid or house is dirty, she got raggedy feet, or, uh, you know, or she's too career oriented, you know? But, you know, at this age, I'm looking for not a temporary thing, but a permanent thing, you know? Uh, but do you think I'm being too petty? And can I get over the pettiness and overlook things and ease back a little bit? Uh, uh, how old are you? 50. <laughs> See, like a woman would look at you and might want to fix some stuff. She might not like the little mailman shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the cue card lady so mad, this is what she wrote. <laughs> Donovan, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, thank you. So you just went from the mailman to just... <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna do Coming to America with... with yeah. Wakanda? Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> now, after seeing yourself on TV, man, and kind of watching how people responded to you, what, what, what was your reaction to all of that? Well, to me, it was pretty funny, because, uh, first of all, starting with the wrinkle thing, anybody that knows me knows I'm obsessed with ironing. I'm also a nurse. I put creases down the front, the middle, the sleeve. Anyway, I rushed here that day, had a job interview. I, I still hadn't unpacked. I just moved here that week. 
and I went to an interview for a nursing job and got the job and then ran here real quick. Yeah. So I went on with wrinkles and everything, so I'm gonna just have fun. Okay, based on what you said, how did your family and friends respond to all of this? Oh, man, my mom called me from D.C. like, Baby boy, was that you on TV? I said, oh, yes, ma'am, it was, it was me. I, I, you know, my brother had put something on Facebook, reposted it, talking about he don't speak for all the men in the family, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they was distancing they self. Yeah, I had to get them turn it, cut, cut that down. I had to get them turn that off. Well, let's see what some of our viewers had to say about this. Oh, Lord. Uh, Chris says, uh, 50 in age, 15 in the mind. Humble yourself and have a seat. <laughs> Elizabeth says she may not like your 11-inch forehead. <laughs> well, you fixed that with that cap today. <laughs> uh, there was also some positive feedback as well. Barbara says, I'll iron, cook, clean, and anything else for him. Send him my way. All right. Yeah. All right, all right. Then Howard also says, this is what 50 years with no woman will do. May you look like you're 35. Stay single, my brother. Stay single. <laughs> all right, all right. We really back because the producer said that you kind of wanted to redeem yourself. And so what would you like to say this time that you didn't get a chance to say the first time? Oh, well, you know, it's not all about the physical attraction, which is maybe what it seemed like I was all about. You know, I like women that are smart, fun, beautiful, you know, and love the Lord, of course, you know. Yeah, that's number one. One other thing I got slaved for was saying women being too career-oriented. I didn't mean I didn't want a woman that works hard. I said that, well, what I was trying to say is there needs to be a balance. Sometimes couples get too caught up in what they're doing and forget about each other. But you know, we don't want no broke woman either. Cause we want yeah. stability. What are you about? We want the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't want no broke woman either. Well, make some more money then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring you back on the show. And I'm gonna take, since we got so many views, I'm going to have women email who are interested in getting to know him. Oh, cool. Thank you. Then oh, the producers you. are going to go through everybody and pick who they think are the best suited, and we're going to bring three. That's be a good thing. We're going to follow up on that. Thank you. After Thank the break, y'all, we'll see if one of our past guests has become a little less crazy and a little more realistic. We'll be right back. <laughs> viral after appearing in a digital exclusive, Hey Steve, and stated that she always received positive results from the man she was dating after being rude to him. So after nearly six million views online, we brought her back to find out if this method's still working for her or not. But first, let's take a look at what she said that caused many of you to lose your mind. So I'm currently single and I'm dating, but there's one that I like, like more than the rest. But we have an issue. I'm really mean to him. Like, I'm really mean to him. Like, okay. I insult him all the time. And he loves it, which is fine, it works. But then, cause like the way that I think is, is that if you are not, if you don't put these guys on check, they think you stupid. <laughs> And he ignores me when I'm nice to him, but if I mean to him, he, he talks to me. So, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Anybody ever asked you, was you crazy? <laughs> All the best ones are crazy. <laughs> You're mean to a man, and he likes it. Likes it. Let me tell you something about men. We will tolerate crazy to get what we want. <laughs> See this crazy you pulling? He taking it right now because he wants something. You're mean to the guy. He likes it. No, 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 he don't. He like what he think is going to get him. Hey, Valentina, how you Hi. doing? Good, how are you? So, okay, what, what, what happened to make you think that men like you being rude to him? 
You know, I just don't let anyone walk all over me. Like, if someone says something to me that I don't like or I disagree with, I just, like, make it clear and I let them know, like, this is not okay or this is not. And sometimes, unfortunately, like, when you want to get your word across, you have to say it in a way so they get it. And hurting their feelings works, but then they like it, you know? Like, they think it's like, oh, like, it's, it, oh, you're, you're spicy. I like that. So I kind of use the reverse thing. It's like, you're mean to them, and they come around, you know? So whatever. Where's, where, where's the guy that you were rude to? Um, I, he, he did something annoying, and I didn't like it. So I just played Time Is Up from Poppy and blocked him. Oh, listen to me. Being mean is a, isn't an accident. Mm -hmm. It's it's an intent. Right. It's a defense mechanism. It is, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm a hairstylist. That's my li line of work. So I do hair, and I work with a lot of women, and I hear so many stories about what happens to them, and I think I probably, like, internalize it because I don't want that to happen to me. Let, let me ask you this. How has being on the show, how has that impacted your life? Did any of your friends think you were too aggressive? Some of my, my women friends were like, no. No what? You're not aggressive at all. You're fine. Okay, and you, you need a new group of friends. No. No, no you really I do. I love my group of no, friends. I, no, I know you love them, but you love them because they agree. You need some people who would tell you the truth. Well, right, right, that's what I was gonna get to. But my male friends were like, look, Val, we know you, so we know how you are. You're very blunt, you're to the point and stuff. But, like, you can't always be like that, you know? You could get your point across without being so mean I mean, you can. You can actually get more across. I know. Wouldn't you like to be special to somebody? Yeah, someday, but it's not like I live my life um, with thinking that, oh, I need to be special to somebody. I'm but special regardless. I just feel like, you know, if I meet somebody that I like and that I we click with. I want them to accept me for who I am. I may not be the easiest person to deal with, but I'm glad that I am that way. See, that, all, all of that you saying sounds good for you. Right. It doesn't sound good for the people involved. I think you're blowing who you really are. I think you're a really smart lady. I think you're very educated. I think you're very ambitious. And I think you want something in life. You just don't want to be hurt. But nobody wants to be hurt. But you got to let something go so you can have something. Right now, you're playing the game like this. No man can get in. The real you is in there. Hey, when we come back, we're going to talk to a past guest who had a big decision to make. Uh, follow her dreams or move back home. We'll find out which one of those she chose right after this. Uh, you know, it's 2019, and dating apps are all the rage, like Bumble and Tinder. It's kind of the way people are meeting these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the problem I've encountered is that a lot of the women who I've been meeting on there, they really heavily uh, filter themselves in their photos, or they use pictures from 20, 30 years ago. And so uh, when you go and meet them, they don't look anything like their photo. <laughs> so uh, I guess I'm asking you, is it all right if I show up at a restaurant and maybe the woman doesn't look anything like her picture if I either ghost her or uh, maybe hit the drive through instead? Yep, hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why. I don't like ghosting after you've known a person and you're all in a relationship and you just disappear on the woman. I'm not into that. But if you're deceiving a man, come on now, or vice versa, if a man is deceiving you, if he ain't what he say he is, but if she ain't what she say she is, so we're already in the deceptive business. <laughs> so let me deceive you. <laughs> now, she, you gonna get a phone call. Did you just walk out the restaurant? I was at the bar, I saw you had the blue jacket on, I saw you, did you just walk out the restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, just why. Why did you leave? Because you ain't who you said you was. You don't look nothing like your picture. But Steve, the last girl that I went to meet, she had cut off all her hair. She looked nothing like it. The hair color was different. She kind of looked like one of my mom's friends, to be honest. So, uh, but, but I felt bad. I felt guilty. So I still, still paid for dinner. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. 
Uh, just being a gentleman, you can do it, but it's wrong, though. Ladies, it's wrong. It's wrong when a guy deceives you. That's like a guy sitting up there talking about he's single and he got a whole family somewhere. <laughs> that ain't right. Or if a guy tell you he got it going on and he ain't got nothing going on. <laughs> you know, it's wrong. Whatever picture you posted, do your hair, makeup, do all that same way. <laughs> Be the picture. <laughs> if you got a filter on it, get you some lights. Walk in with lights. <laughs> Get your damn camera, cut your flashlight on, and walk in. <laughs> but you got to be that picture, man. Please, stop doing it. Stop putting these pictures up 10 years ago. You didn't look like that. You're beautiful just the way you are. Just bring your fine cell phone in there right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Smoking, no cooking, no hot pot. Cooking, working on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Looking up, open the park pot.